I'm Karen, and this is The Learning Circuit, where we learn about basic electronics. It's the holidays, which means that the kids are going to be home all day looking for things to do. So I'm going to show you a project that you can do with your kids, or your nieces and nephews, or your friends' kids, or your grandkids, or you could even do yourself. We're going to make a wiggle bot. There are toys on the market that wiggle, like these hex bugs, but why buy it when you can build it? Now all you need to make one of these is a battery and a motor. For our wiggle bots, we're gonna be using a battery, which means that we're gonna want a DC motor. Now here are some DC motors that I have found in common objects. This one I pulled out of a cheap electric toothbrush I got at the dollar store. These are from video game controllers the guys had lying around. This one I think might've been out of a cell phone. And this is a computer fan. Now, this one won't work as is. We actually have to break a few of the fan blades off so that it's off balance. How vibrating motors work is they're just like regular DC motors with a regular shaft coming out of the middle, but a weight is placed at the end so that when it spins, it's constantly pushing that weight around in different directions, and that's what causes it to vibrate. Once you've chosen your motor, you want to make sure that your batteries are going to supply enough power to make it run. This motor is out of the electric toothbrush and only needed one AA battery, so it can run on 1.5 volts. This fan says right here that it needs 12 volts to run. Now I know that I can hook up a 9 volt battery to this and it'll still be enough power for it to turn on. A lot of motors have an optimal rating where it'll say it wants 3 volts to run or 5 volts to run, but a lot of times it can use a different voltage, maybe a little bit more or a little less to run. So let's look at our battery choices. To get three volts, we can use either a two AA battery pack, because each battery is 1.5 volts, so times two, that equals three, or we could use a button cell battery, a CR2032 is also a three volt battery, so we could get a pack like this. If we need a little more oomph, we can use a nine volt battery with a snap. Now getting these parts doesn't have to be expensive. You can pick them up at your local store. Like I said, I got this motor out of electric toothbrush from my dollar store, and at the same dollar store, I found this strand of holiday lights that has a lovely three volt battery pack. And oh look, it also has a switch. How handy. The simplest way to make your Wigglebot is to take your battery pack and your motor and make sure that you have nice long stripped ends. And then we're gonna twist those wires together. Twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it. Once you've twisted your wires together, it's good to cover it in electrical tape. That'll help keep it together and you don't want your red wire is touching your black wires because that'll cause a short and make it not work. Black on black. Oop, nice and good. Okay. It's gonna be tricky because as soon as I touch it, it's gonna turn on. Oh man. Oh, I should have my tape ready. Twisty, twisty, twisty. It's alive! Well, that's fun, but I feel like we need a little bit more than that. For the kids that want a really simple project, that's all you need. Hook up your motor to your battery and let them decorate. Use things around the house like pipe cleaners, pom-pom balls, popsicle sticks, paper clips, my favorite, googly eyes. Ooh, googly eyes. Or you can even use electrical parts like old resistors. Whatever you have lying around the house will do. Here are two bots I've made in the past. So here's one that just uses pipe cleaners as legs. Now, when you're making legs, it's good to have just a few points, make sure they're balanced, and make sure that whatever the feet are made of doesn't have too much friction so that they'll move around good. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. This one, I'm using markers as legs so it'll draw while it wiggles. Whoa. Whoop, go that way. No, go that way. <laughs> Look at these beautiful pieces of artwork. Conveniently create Christmas presents for your relatives using your wiggle butt. As fun as making that art was, some kids might be looking for something a little more, not just a simple robot. So let's take it up a notch. We're gonna add a capacitor. A capacitor is a little like a battery. Although they work in completely different ways, capacitors and batteries both store electrical energy. Batteries have two terminals. Chemical reactions inside the batteries produce electrons on one terminal and absorb electrons on the other terminal. 
Capacitors cannot produce electrons. They can only store them. Capacitors usually have two ratings, voltage and farads, which is the unit of measurement of capacitance. For our project, we want to select a capacitor that is rated for approximately the voltage we'll be using and has high capacitance. I selected a capacitor that's rated for 5 farads and 2.7 volts. In this new circuit, we're going to replace the battery with the capacitor. However, the capacitor only stores energy, so how do we get energy into it? We have to design our circuit so that we can hook up batteries to just the capacitor to charge it up and then be able to connect the capacitor to the motor. Let's see how that works. We're gonna build our circuit on a breadboard. Let's review how those work. Here are three different breadboards. For this tiny breadboard, if you look really closely, you can see a one, two, and three at the bottom of three of the columns. What that tells me is that each of these columns is connected. So if I were to plug something in to any of these five holes, they would be connected to anything else plugged into those holes. The same goes for the rest of those columns. On this breadboard, it goes by rows. So for this row, these five holes are connected on the right side, and then these five holes are connected on the left side. The left side and the right side are not connected, but I still have lots of rows to work with. This is a more traditional breadboard that has power rails on the side. What that means is we still have our rows of five holes that are connected on the left and the right side, but up the far sides, you have power rails. So all of the holes here in this column next to the red line are connected, and then all of the holes here next to the blue line are connected. Those are intended to be used for power and ground. I'm gonna use this breadboard for our circuit. First, I'm gonna plug in our motor. Do, 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 do. Next, I'm going to plug in the capacitor. I want one of the leads of the capacitor to be in the same row as one of the leads from the motor. Do, 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 do. There it goes. I'm going to use these two jumper wires. One I'm going to plug into the same row as the second lead of the capacitor, and the other one I'm going to plug into the second lead of the motor. Then I can use this jumper to connect the two of them to complete the circuit when I'm ready to use my capacitor as my power source. Plug this in here, and then plug this in here. All right, my circuit is set up. All I would need to do is plug this jumper on to connect these two wires. But first, I wanna make sure that I charge up my capacitor so that it can actually power the motor. I'll plug one lead of the battery pack in here, and the other lead in here. All right, I'm gonna disconnect my battery. Let's see what happens. Success! Now if you charge your capacitor longer, you might be able to get it to run your motor for longer. Here's a tiny one I made. I decided to use LEDs for legs. Let's charge it up. Unplug our battery. Got my jumper here. Got my LED legs. Let's see if it goes crazy. Woo! Going all over the place. Woo, look at that little motor go. Could have races. You've got your basic circuit. Now it's up to you to make your bot fabulous. Look around your house and see what you can add to your bot to make it interesting. And then tell us about it on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. We'll see you next time. Have a good holiday.